number 142 with a familiar guest that we had back on episode number 98, Mia Kang. Welcome back. How are you, girl? Hi, guys. I'm good. Thanks for having me back. Super excited. I mean, if you really want to get the full background story, I think you should go back and listen to number 98. But Mia's had quite a trailblazing career all over the world. And now she's stuck with us here in beautiful Phuket, Thailand. Yeah. It, it seems like um, throughout the years, uh, your why has changed. And Sean and I had this topic come up quite uh, recently. We were talking about how we started for completely different reasons, training Muay Thai and what we're doing right now. And just over the years, it's completely changed. And I was reading a little backstory on you, how when you were a young kid, you were a bit overweight and you were bullied and it kind of led to the opposite extreme of becoming a model and losing half the weight that you had on your body. And, yeah. and then you kind of found like this middle ground. And I feel like a lot of us do that is like, uh, when I first started training, I went from one extreme to the other extreme and then just try to find a nice balance in the middle. So uh, why don't you do like a quick little synopsis of why you started uh, training, going into modeling, how one mm -hmm. thing led to another and then in going into today. Sure. I'll try and like not spiral off into on a tangent. But um, yeah, so I was I grew up you know, I was like the fat girl in class and I was bullied and picked on. And then when I was 13, I lost a bunch of weight. Um, I lost, you know, like a third of like around a third of my body weight. And I suddenly got scouted as a model. And like the boys that were bullying me then were then like asking me out to the dance and stuff. And my whole life kind of flipped around. Um, and I think I learned from like a really young age how people treat you differently based on what you look like and what size you are, you know, like people really judge you and, and your whole life can, can be different. And so, um, I spent the next, you know, 15 years modeling around the world. And as I grew up in this industry, I really developed like every eating disorder that you could possibly think of. And, um, it was kind of normal for me because that was what everybody in my world did. And that was like, you know, our livelihood depended on it. So it was kind of normal. Um, and then when I was 27, I completely had a meltdown and a breakdown and I was depressed and I, you know, was living off like Marlboro lights and diet Coke. Um, I was 27 and everybody in my industry was expecting me to look like I was when I was 17 and my body was rejecting it. My mind was rejecting it. everything was, um, you know, everything was, I was really, I would say at rock bottom. And then I, um, I, I, I took a trip to Thailand. I needed a break and I thought like, how, where's the furthest place that I could get from New York and this life. And so I, I booked a, a 10 day trip to Thailand. Uh, I went to Koh Samui and I drove past a Muay Thai gym and I was like such a creeper in the beginning. I would like slow down my car and like, <laughs> watch them and then the second day I like parked my car outside and, and watched and they came out and they were like hello and I drove off and like and then eventually I built up the courage to go in and I was like I want to try and then I came back every day and then that 10-day vacation turned into six months of me you know I, I moved into the gym and I and I fell in love with Muay Thai and over that course of time I learned to get over my eating disorders and I recovered or I began recovery, I should say. Um, and then I went back to New York eventually and I kind of said to the industry, you know, something needs to change because the, the women that we look at in our magazines and on our billboards, they should be healthy and happy and secure women. We shouldn't have to be killing ourselves to look this way. So that's how I started Muay Thai and that's what led me to, you know, martial arts and here I am. Did I answer the question? Did I, did I, yes. did I smile yes. off? Okay. There's no wrong answer to that. So you're all good. Okay. And obviously it's been quite a journey. And since like you first learned about Muay Thai, you, you've been in the sport for a little while now. Now you're in Thailand during the, the COVID pandemic and everything. And I'm sure a My lot of people. My accident, by the way, I never actually planned to be here. I actually 
because I, I grew up in Hong Kong and we went through SARS. So I knew that some kind of like lockdown situation was going to happen. So I was like, all right, one last trip to Thailand. Let me get it in there. And then I came here and then I actually got hospitalized with suspected COVID. This was like back before we even had like tests or anything in March. And then by the time I didn't have COVID, it was bronchitis. But then by the time that I came out of, you know, I got my results back, it took eight days for my results to come back back then. Um, the borders had shut. So I was like, all right, I mean, sweet. Let's, this is, all right, cool. <laughs> so for, so we've been talking to our audience a lot about our experience of what it's been like in Thailand during COVID and everything, but I guess it would be a, a better way to get a different perspective on what it's been like for you. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what was it like when you first were in lockdown and quarantine and how you were able to kind of uh, just stay sane and productive through it? And then what's it been like after that? Is life changed that much while you've been living in Thailand or has it been kind of same, same, but different? <laughs> I like that. Um, I mean, I think lockdown was pretty similar for everyone globally, I'd say. I'd say we all kind of went through similar things. It was that like unknown. We didn't quite know how bad the virus was and who had it, where it was. We were all very like fearful. You know, we all suffered from the isolation. Um, I think, you know, I've heard so many cases of you know, so many people going through anxiety and depression and just how to be alone with ourselves and not be defined by your work, your job, your training, your social life, you know, all these things that we, that we're so attached to. And I struggled just like everybody else. I, 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 I had a tough time. I don't say that, you know, everybody's like, oh, but you're in paradise, but we're still stuck at home. You know, like we weren't allowed to go to the beaches. We were, our lockdown was as serious as we got. Like we were locked down by neighborhood. You know what I mean? Like they did it like right away too. Yeah, like, they right were, like, away. Like, yeah. yeah, we're locked down by neighborhood. You have we had curfew. Like again, the testing wasn't wasn't you know happening all the time. It wasn't very thorough back then. So it was still like, who has it? I don't know. Does everybody have it? Like, mm -hmm. can, I, can I go to the supermarket and like, uh, do I? Am I freaking out? You know, it was. I think everybody kind of went through that and yeah, I, I don't know. I, did I answer the question again? What I'm were like, some what? of your <laughs> coping? Uh, Sean was just asking about your coping mechanisms, like throughout the time, keeping yourself busy, keeping the mind feeling like it's productive throughout the time and just not getting yeah, inside I mean, your it own was, head. It was, it was honestly tough for me. I think the first, the first part of lockdown was like, great. Let's like watch Netflix and like relax, you know? And then it was like, okay, we need to figure out how to get some normalcy. Like, you know, we got to work out from home. We got to start, you know, hitting pads at home. We got to start mm. and then, you know, get creative in order to like keep our sanity. And then um, how long were we in lockdown for? How long was that? I feel like it was, I feel like Phuket was different than where I am right now. Uh, That's true because we had it. We yeah. Had it. I think Phuket was at least what, like six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. Something like that. I don't remember, but it felt like a very, very long time. And then, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I definitely struggled, especially towards the end. I definitely struggled. And then I kind of got into this funk of like not being productive. And and it was it's really hard. Even when lockdown was over, I found it hard to like go back to the gym or, you know, just be a productive human being because I was, so, I was now kind of used to this like, Oh, well, I'll still stay at home. You know, I don't know. I struggled. I, I, I don't know about you guys. Did you guys, how would you yeah. guys handle it? Yeah. I mean, me personally, it was, uh, it was a struggle at first and, uh, we actually had our house broken in, uh, during, uh, COVID it was, it was wild. And so we were living pretty, uh, isolated, like on, it was on the sea. It was a beautiful place, but, um, it was super isolated. It was like pros and cons. Right. And so it ended up, just really uh at, at first it didn't affect us too much because we had a good training space we had a good routine we work from home anyway and we're, we're kind of both liz and i are, are kind of like 
home bodies. And so it kind of, if, if anything, it gave us an excuse to stay home and not socialize, if you know what I mean. And so we're like, oh, yeah, like let's kind of use the most out of it. But uh, once the break in happened, it kind of shifted our uh, perspective on like how we, we live in this small bubble on this island. And j just in Thailand in general, we live in this small bubble where, meanwhile, everyone back in the States, everyone back in Europe, pretty much everywhere around the world is going through lockdown for the second time. And so when I realized that, like, all right, th this is a little bit more serious than I'm probably taking it. That's when I started actually getting a little bit more anxious and overwhelmed. So I made sure that uh, first we moved, we had to move because we just couldn't sleep at night anymore. And then after that, we started to socialize more. We went to the gym a little bit more and try to make a, a normal uh, routine out of it. But we, we go in highs and lows just like anybody. And so like we'll have weeks where we, we crush it. We have such good productive weeks. And then we'll have weeks where if it rains on a Monday, then it's like, all right, we'll just like take Monday. Off. We'll just stay inside Monday. And then that just kind of translates to the entire week. So it's been, it's been a struggle for sure. And I think if you're, if you haven't struggled during this time period, uh, some, something's wrong with you probably yeah, or <laughs> like, like to let us know, what are you doing that I'm not doing? Like yeah, write exactly. a book, make a podcast. I don't know. Like we need to know, <laughs> but no, I'm just like you. And then plus over here, it was rainy season. Mm -hmm. So again, people are like, yeah, but you're in Thailand, you're in paradise, just go out, go to the beach. It, this is like monsoon style rain 23 hours a day like this. It's exactly that. Like, you know, you wake up, open the curtains, it's raining like, all right, so we're staying inside today. And that's every day. It makes it even harder to motivate yourself to get out and do well, for me anyway, it makes it really hard. I'm re I get really affected by the weather. But Mia Kang's human, everyone. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So speaking of actually getting outside once you have the opportunity to, you did this trailblazing campaign with Amazing I Thailand. Did. And I, I, had... I just skipped through that. What when were you able to do that? Because it was really interesting to watch through so the entire we thing. Film that I, that was an amazing experience to just like break it down for people. I was very lucky to partner up with the Thailand Tourism Authority, and uh, we traveled around Thailand August and a little bit of September. We took about a month, and we traveled through the three southern provinces, three central provinces, three northern provinces, and we filmed kind of like off the beaten track Thailand, like not traditional, you know, touristy Thailand that people tend to think of when you think Thailand. Um, you know, and they really wanted to show Thailand in you know, for all of its cultural richness and beauty and show people a part of Thailand that people never saw. So that was an amazing experience to me. I, I you know, went to places and thought, saw things that I would have never known about if I didn't have this opportunity. So what was uh, the, the favorite place that you went to? Because like Thailand is, is so, uh, it's pretty diverse for a country that's like, it's hot year round more or less. And, uh, I don't want to overuse the phrase same, same, but different, but like all the, all the places and provinces are relatively similar. Was there anything that like stuck out to you that you kind of like surprised you? Ooh, um, I, I'm biased though, because the South is like the beaches and the islands. And that's for me, my favorite part of Thailand is the South. I'm a beach girl. I'm, I'm totally about that. But I was really, um, I was really overwhelmed with pie. Have you guys ever been to pie? I have not. I, uh, me and Mia have made the drive on the motorbike from Chiang Mai. So it's like uh, 700 something turn loop. And I don't know if you flew into there, but if you take the van, it makes people sick. So instead yeah, we, we, we no, got we on the little and click. I had to take anti-nauseous pills and I passed out the entire way. Otherwise I would have thrown up everywhere, but the, it's worth the trip. It is worth it. Like I thought pie was amazing. It's like a town in, I didn't realize it was in like a, a, an extinct volcano. So the ground is like super mineralized and they like, they grow rice there and all the vegetables taste really amazing because of the earth is super mineral. It was just, I don't know. I was kind of blown away by pie. Um, and, you know, everybody there is just like really into like wellness and they're spiritual or like yoga. And I don't know. I thought it was super cool. Chiang Mai as well. I haven't ever really spent that much time in Chiang Mai and I was super impressed. I thought Chiang Mai was really cool. 
it's the culture of the people that live there for even the foreigners there they're ones that live with families or for a long time and there's a lot of universities as well so mm -hmm. it's and within 20 minutes you can get to the rice fields and be like with the people in the village what, what were you able to do there what are some of the top things that you would suggest to, for people to check off when heading to like each region like if you go to the north you must see this do this if you go to the south you must see this do this it, okay something that really stood out to me i've had a lot of elephant experiences in thailand all over the place but i went to a place called into the wild in chiang mai that was just i have goosebumps right now i wish you could see it was just i've never seen elephants as literally as close as i could imagine they were they would be in the wild like they they were running on this land they'd like run towards you and you it's terrifying but they i don't know they're there's they love the people they live with and they were so happy and they bathe in the rivers it was just like getting really an, the best elephant experience i've ever had so i would highly recommend that to anybody. Um, I also hiked uh, Doyen Tanan, the, the tallest mountain in mm. Thailand. I went on a hike through there where we, we ended up at a, on a farmer's farm uh, and he grows all organic vegetables and fruits and he cooks a lunch for you. Um, it's organized by the Raya Heritage Hotel, if anybody wants to go. But that was an amazing experience to hike through Doi Chan. It gets cold also mm -hmm. in Chiang Mai on the mountain. I didn't realize that. Yeah. But yeah, it gets cold. I was super impressed with Chiang Mai. But like I said, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Southern Thailand kind of girl, I think. I can totally relate. Because like <laughs> I, I've spent time up north as well. And I, I love it for the change of pace. But when it comes down to it, I need a beach and like the funny thing is like i'm a pasty white boy who doesn't really like being in the sun but i just like being by the water and like being on the beach and stuff and it's just something that's like really soothing about the uh the sea and the ocean so i can totally relate to that mm -hmm. um i want to transition a little bit to your book because that's a big hit and it's called knockout and i honestly haven't read it yet i bought it on uh, my kindle it's on my oh, to read list supporting. and yeah of course and uh i'm really interested to just dive deep into it can you give us a little uh insight on what the the inspiration behind writing the book was and why you felt like right now was a good time to come out with it so a book takes a really long time to write. I didn't know Talking this. Talking A, I bet. Before, but it's, uh, I've been working on this for about two years before we published. And um, I, the, the one driving force that really wanted me to, to write this book was the main driving force, I should say, was that I wanted people who struggle with body image, who struggle with um, eating disorders, who struggle with disordered eating, who struggle with any of uh, anything to do with their body and their body image, to know that it's possible to get out of this cycle. It's possible to recover and it's possible to be happy and be healthy, even when you don't think that, that you can be. Um, and I did that because when I was in the complete midst of uh, eating disorders and, and I really Really thought that I was going to have to live like this forever. I thought that there was no way out. So that was like the main message that I wanted to get out. And I don't think that my book, I didn't, I didn't really write it. I didn't tell my story aimed at women or aimed at models or aimed at a particular type of group of people. I think that everybody can kind of relate to going from self-loathing to self-love. I think that we all struggle with our relationship with ourselves and learning to really love ourselves um, at some point in our in some way, shape, or form throughout our lives. And I just wanted to tell my story about how finding Muay Thai and martial arts was open that door for me. So you writing this book, I'm sure it stirred up some emotions and memories, having to like sort through it all the terrible. things. It was terrible. I, you I mean, I was like, it was like. I had to relive memories because I, t I t tell it all in this book. I go through traumas, like ex-boyfriends, my parents, you know, sexual abuse, drug abuse, like every everything that made me who I am today, that brought me to the point where I walked into a Muay Thai gym just 
so like lost and looking for something that would help me respect myself. And I, I just completely tell it all. And I had to go through each of these traumas and memories in, again and again in such detail of like, okay, what was I wearing? How did I feel? What did, mm. Honestly, writing this book was like therapy. It was, I had to like sort through all of these feelings and all these residual feelings. And actually, fun fact for you, the final draft of the book that you have to submit in, I couldn't read it at that point. I actually let my team just, I said, I trust you, go ahead and make the edits, but I can't read it again because I was just so, like all the emotions are on the surface. And since being published, I haven't, I haven't read it. Wow. So what was the writing process like? Because I, I myself, um, as creative as I get, it, it comes more to editing and video and having to sit down and force myself like from this time to this time and gaining inspiration for it. So how were you able to complete this? And were you still writing it during the COVID time? I, through COVID, I was editing, um, which comes with a little bit of writing. But at that point, we'd written the main manuscript. And I was that was, a, a you know, I was happy that I had a project during COVID and I had something to work on. Um, but thank God I had a team of people that had deadlines that were chasing me. Cause if I didn't, I mm. would, yeah, but no, I had people accountability. Like, Hello, you're supposed to send me this. And that, that was what kept me <laughs> with deadlines really. <laughs> so what was the whole, uh, like, obviously you couldn't do a book tour. I would imagine you would be doing that if there wasn't a worldwide pandemic. Uh, how's it been uh, like just getting the word out on the book and how's the response been? Has there been any surprises or just like give us a general feel for uh, like how it's been, uh, how, how the public has been taking it? Um, I mean, you're right. I would have gone on a book tour if we weren't in the midst of a global pandemic. Um, but it's crazy how everything has shifted digital. It's, I find it actually amazing. And I'm wondering that when we do get to like some kind of normal again, will we shift out of this everything digital? Because we're all sitting at home, like, you know, trying to make it work. I'm curious to know that would, maybe there will be no more book tours. I don't know. Um, no, but we just shifted. We had to do stuff like, you know, I couldn't sign any of the books which was crazy. So I had to, we had to come up with something where I'd sign like stickers and then we'd stick them in the books and um, just completely shift. But we launched, we still did some press. We're still, you know, we still kind of made it work, but I hope people like it. Honestly, I really try and not read reviews. I, because I try and tell myself that I didn't write this book for anybody's approval. I wrote this book mm. to tell my story and to tell a message. So I actually haven't really been reading many reviews. I get sent good ones by my publicist team, but if there are bad ones out there, there are bad ones out there. That's the other thing. I feel like some people may not relate to my story. Some people, you know, it's, um, I don't know. I just there'll always be critics. There's like, even to world champions, there's people who are like, Oh, he should have done this, should have done that. Right. It's crazy. Right. And so I love how you're able to just like drop into the gratitude of being able to write this book and actually, uh, spread the, this message of, of self love and learning how to, uh, love yourself in, in a way that with the world and social media and, and especially the, the, the modeling niche and everything, I'm sure so many people are, are struggling with this, these inner battles. And so you being vulnerable enough to come out and share some of the, these traumatic moments that, uh, were probably hard to revisit for you. It, it really speaks volumes. Um, I wanted to follow up with, uh, because we've been talking about Muay Thai, but I also know, and we're the Muay Thai guys, so I feel like this is blasphemy even asking about jiu-jitsu right now, but I've seen you've been practicing jiu-jitsu. What's that been like? And like, have you been doing it for, for very long at all? Listen, I feel bad talking about it too, but I'm <laughs> in an open relationship with Muay Thai, I would say. Um, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, listen, honestly, how I, how I viewed it when I was – um, you know, cause Joe asked me if I wanted to try and I was like, yeah, sure. And my approach was I've gotten so much and I continue to get so much from Muay Thai. Right. I, I I'm sure you guys can relate. Like the more you practice, you just feel like you learn more about yourself, not just about the sport, but about yourself. And you just learn more on your journey of martial arts. And I felt like, well, 
maybe if I like jujitsu, maybe I can get that too. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I started jujitsu about six months ago. Um, and I love it. I really love it. I'm not saying that I love it more than Muay Thai, but I'm saying Damn straight. that if, like, if I had to choose between the two, I'd choose Muay Thai, but I love it. And I, I think it's, dude, I didn't know. It's like a puzzle. It's just like this endless puzzle. And I'm such a like control freak that I'm like, I have to know the answers. Tell me the answers. So it's just this endless, like, I have to come back tomorrow. I have to learn. Um, but it's super cool. The intimacy took me a second to adjust because okay. in Muay Thai. And the other thing is I kept pushing everybody away because in Muay Thai, you're all about the distance. So people would try and throw themselves at me and I'm just like, Ugh. Um, but no, it's super cool. It's, 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 um, I think all martial arts are, it's a very similar journey you're on with yourself. And I just, I'm down for that journey. I don't know. It's cool. Have you guys ever tried jujitsu? Back in the day when I was trying to do MMA and yeah. then, uh, it, like, it was cool. Like I, I appreciate it for what it My is, you know, sound has completely gone. Oh no, that's sad. Can you hear me now? I, I can hear you. I can hear both of you. Yeah. And Mia. My sound is completely gone. Oh no. There's a button. I can't hear anything. I feel like somebody just locked me out of the party. You can't. How do we contact her? <laughs> Leave the and then come back. <laughs> Guys, what is going on? Uh, <laughs> Jump out and back in. Jump out and back in. Let's see. I'm gonna try to send. I can't her hear. Bit. Okay. Text me. <laughs> so I will just uh, whoever's listening right now. If you guys got questions, by the way, you can uh, ask them right here. And then once Mia can hear us, I'm feeling super sad audio, right now. <laughs> Let's see. We're trying to figure out on uh, how hmm. often were you uh, doing jujitsu when you were doing it, Sean? I was doing it. Uh, I was doing it like full time, just as much as I was doing Muay Thai and stuff. (laughs) Just, just, just (laughs) she just can't hear us, but everyone can hear all of us. Just, Just like quit. Okay. The browser. With the browser. There we go. You know, uh, I was uh, I was showing up to jujitsu, and every time I was I was just kind of doing it because it's like okay, jujitsu and Muay Thai to do MMA. But all I wanted to do was Muay Thai the entire time. I was like, I was doing the you know like uh, some people do Muay Thai and they come to the clinch practice because they're like, oh, I guess it's a part of Muay Thai. That's how I was yeah. like, oh, this is a part of MMA. I got to do the Jiu Jitsu part. But every yeah. time there was an opportunity for like a smoker, I'd just be jumping into the smoker. All right. Can that you hear us now? Terrible. That I felt like I literally was locked out of the party. But I'm back. I don't know what happened. All right, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, all right. I think we got it all good and everything. I don't remember where we left off, but we were talking about okay. jiu-jitsu. Oh, and, yeah. I um, asked if you guys have ever tried jiu-jitsu. Oh, yeah. So when I first started uh, doing Muay Thai, I wanted to do MMA. So I didn't even know I wanted to do Muay Thai. I just wanted to be a cool cage fighter dude. And uh, jiu-jitsu was fun. Um, I don't even want to say it was fun. I, I didn't really enjoy it, to be honest. Like I, I enjoyed the, the art of it, and I can understand the obviously the benefit of it and how technical and how much of a chess game it is and how beneficial it is in the context of like MMA and actual fighting. But uh, Paul was saying as you left, like he found himself while I was training jujitsu, it's just like thinking like, man, I should be doing Muay Thai right now. So every time I was doing jujitsu, I was just thinking, well, I could be like punching and kicking shit right now instead of rolling around and having yeah. this guy pour in my mouth as I'm trying to, not get choked out, you know? And so it was a little bit of a, it was a, a jujitsu early on is, uh, is tough to enjoy because you're the white belt. Right. And so mm-hmm. you're the, you're the fresh meat that everyone is just trying to tap out and 
crank your arms. And one thing is too is with Muay Thai, the the pain of getting punched or kicked is different than the pain of getting like your arm torqued or your neck cranked. Right, like, like jujitsu is try you're trying to kill somebody. Which yeah. I had to like wrap my head around that for a second. I'm like, so you're telling me that I'm trying to kill this person? Like I'm trying to choke this person till they like die? Like, do you know what I mean? I'm like, what are we doing here? Like what is actually going on? But um, I totally agree with you. And I feel like jujitsu, the learning curve is like that. You're like, mm -hmm. in the beginning, you're like, I don't understand anything. I don't even know. Like, it's just, it's so overwhelming. And then you have this person on top of you and you're like, what in the world is going on? But I think that's kind of what, I was addicted. I kind of was kind of addicted to that super steep learning curve. I felt. I feel like it's super gratifying. But yeah, I've heard from a lot of people. White belt is like the most challenging. Like exactly. apparently, so many people give up at blue belt. Like they get their blue belt and then they're like, "I'm done. I'm good." <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if you appreciate one martial art, you learn to appreciate the others. And I definitely found that because when I first started training, it was similar to Sean. I just wanted to show up for Muay Thai. And whenever there was an opportunity to do a smoker or a Muay Thai fight, that's what I kept doing. And it was probably also because of my body build. I just felt like more natural doing Muay Thai. I'm a long, lanky guy. And it felt like the sport for me versus Jiu Jitsu. I was just getting my ass like mopped on the floor, especially by wrestlers. But now that I'm getting a little bit older and I feel more mobile and I appreciate the intricacies in Muay Thai. Now, when I look at Jiu Jitsu, it's almost like the same exact thing. I appreciate the intricacy of what jujitsu is so i think once i retire from fighting pro because i don't want to do anything that i'm not going to be great at and i mm -hmm. can continue to be a world champion at muay thai but i know if i jumped into jujitsu and mma i'd get too competitive so i think it'll be more of like a leisure activity as i get older coach other fighters so i just have a better understanding of it. a leisure activity of choking and killing yeah people. right <laughs> pulling their limbs off yeah uh, so we have a few uh, uh, fan questions that we uh, want to get to. Um, you kind of covered this earlier, but I guess we can just reemphasize some of the points that you were talking about. Uh, they want to know what motivated you to fight back against your eating disorder and what made you fall in love with Muay Thai? Oh, the ED was an oh, Eric Tyler discipline. Okay. <laughs> Um, the, the first thing that I fell in love with Muay Thai was visual, like what drew me to it was visually. Like, I couldn't believe how like beautiful and fluid when you watch like two Thai people fight Muay Thai, it's just like, it's like a dance. You're like literally watching like a ballet. It's so intricate. I just couldn't, I was so mesmerized with watching it that I was like, I really want to know how to do that. Um, and what made, what motivated me to fight back? To be honest, I didn't consciously decide that. I don't think that there was a point when I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I think I just started training Muay Thai and then I kind of saw, I saw things I, that my body could do that made me respect it a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, whether it be, you know, learning how to punch somebody or doing a push up or running a mile, like I think, I, I really lived as a model. I really lived this like fragile life where I saw, I saw my body as this thing that just had to be a certain shape, I had to be skinny. And I had to, I didn't realize that what I could do with my body with fitness and with sport. And I didn't know what I was capable of. And I think doing Muay Thai just day by day, I saw my body be physically capable of more and more. And I really liked that. And it made me respect myself. And then I was like, I way prefer this Mia than that Mia. Like I way prefer this, how I'm seeing my body now than how I saw my body before. So that was the mental shift. And then I was like, nah, I, I would rather keep eating, keep training, keep like, you know, keep developing this version of myself than go back to the last one. And then it was kind of like a transition like that. Well said. Yeah, but female fan just saying that she loves you and wondering if you'll ever come out with your own Muay Thai short design. Soon. Soon. Leave uh, the people guessing. Anticipate yeah, I actually have a call about it tomorrow because Ooh. I'm going to go off on one right now, guys. Do it. Because Muay Thai shorts for ladies, I, it, they're hard to find good shorts that fit us because they're made for guys. And if you have a little booty and a little thigh on you, it's even extra hard. And the plus the tie sizing, right? Like, 
like a large size. is yeah is <laughs> yeah. a large is like a, a extra small like it's you know so it's super hard to find shorts that are actually made with women's bodies and shapes in mind so i do actually want to help fix that problem a little bit uh, Liz, my wife has the same. She has the same complaints about even the Muay Thai shorts that I make for my brand. She hates them because they don't <laughs> fit her the right way. And I'm like, but you gotta love them because they're my stuff, and she grudgingly <laughs> will wear them. But I feel like that's been a common theme. Uh, yeah. I've definitely heard that more than once. And so uh, there's a million dollar idea right there. So once you come out with the shorts, let people know because I'm sure I they'll. I will do. I will let you guys know. I'll I'll send Liz a pair. I'll send me a pair. Like this, yeah. Because I'm not the only woman that's struggling with this. That's for sure. Tailored for women. I, I do see that either, like, especially if you have, like, a booty, either they're too tight and you can't, like, really wear them and kick at the same time where they're snug, or they have those just, like, really poofy ones that just shoot out the side and it looks right, like Right, the triangular-shaped ones that are I like hate that. those more. Yeah, that look crazy. And then you have to roll them, and then they're too short, and then, <laughs> like, like it's a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got another one. Uh, I feel like this is a, a good question in regards to how can someone convince their wife to let their daughter get into martial arts? Like, what are some of the key points – that he can bring up because I mean, I can imagine that it can, especially on the outside looking in, if you don't know martial arts, if you don't know fighting, right, it can be really intimidating, especially uh, for girls who are growing up. And so how, how do you convince them? How do you not even convince them just like make it seem like more of a, a beneficial thing as a different to, perspective. Yeah. Honestly, I think that's a misconception with martial arts. And I think a lot of people, when they think martial arts, they think UFC and they think like ground and pound someone's face and blood. And you know what I mean? When that's not at all what martial arts is. And martial arts is such a broad umbrella of so many different arts and sports. And I think that as a, as a woman, I can tell you, I wish I had found martial arts younger. I... I came into martial arts at 27 and I wish so much that I'd done them, done some kind of martial art as a child for many reasons for confidence. Number one, I feel like everybody can relate to that, right? Like it definitely helps you with like pure confidence. I don't mean like ego confidence. I mean, when you, you know, that confidence you need to like go and fight somebody or to step into a ring or to, to put yourself out, out there like that. And, and trust in your own abilities and in yourself that that is something that I think women well all of us but women especially it's so important and we struggle given the society that we live in and all the pressures of you know what society ex expects from us um, the other thing is I find myself walking I'm not, I don't walk around as afraid I'm not saying that like I, you know, feel like I could, if a guy tried to do something to me in the streets, I would kick their, I'm not saying that, but I walk around a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I think I walk around not afraid, which can be so useful to a little girl. To, if a girl learns that, that to not have that fear at a young age, that can be so useful. And I don't like, you can do martial arts and never, I, I'm guessing that, the mom is worried about her hurting herself or, you know, fighting and being injured or, or being for it being too rough, but you can absolutely practice martial arts without any of the roughness for sure. And it's about finding the martial art that's for you. You know, some people hate Muay Thai, love Jiu Jitsu, love karate, hate Jiu Jitsu. You know what I mean? It's about like finding what's good for your personality. So I would absolutely recommend mom, if you're listening, I would absolutely recommend putting your daughter into martial arts. There you go. Just get your your wife to listen to this podcast and then boom, you're good. Yeah. You're golden. Yeah. You know, as you were describing that, it made me think of how important it is for both sexes to really practice because I feel like it teaches a lot a lot of men. Um, just the kind of discipline and, and training with other women. You can see a lot of the times the guys that kind of come in and they have an ego about them. And if they lose to a girl, like being humbled by a girl in the gym, um, so something comes off. And uh, just learning that respect 
that like we're all equal in the gym no matter what sex you are or or skill i feel like having that happen to you uh, makes you a little bit more uh respectful towards women as well so getting sure. both your son get and your For daughter sure. into the sport that's such a good point i think that's that's something that i love about muay thai is you're not seen as a girl or a boy or you know you're not looked at by what you do it's just just about skill and knowledge, you know, and that I think that it can, it's so humbling and it's so like good for the soul to look at other people in that way. I totally agree with you. Sweet. So uh, I think that's all the questions we got for today. It was all always good catching up with you. And uh, it's good to see that you're doing well, that the book's out, that you're enjoying uh, quarantine or not quarantine. You're enjoying your time in uh, Phuket. And like you said, you even spoke to your family right now. It's almost Thanksgiving. And uh, mm -hmm. I kind of miss having like a, a real American Thanksgiving meal. I haven't had it for a little while. So uh, is there anything you want to leave the audience with as you go? Uh, where can they find you and any words of wisdom from the Miss Mia Kang? Um, I mean, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Those are the words of wisdom there, guys. want to support, buy my book. I'd really appreciate that. Um, I also want to just say, I, like I just read this comment on the side here. And it says, Mia, I can say, I just want to read this out loud because I think this is really cool. Mia, I can say for myself, I was overweight as a kid too, and my mom wouldn't let me take up martial arts because I had asthma. I finally took martial arts and I started improving on my health. And I think that's really cool. So shout out to that guy. We can do that. On that. Yeah. yeah. I've improved my health for sure. So thank you guys for having me on. I always have such a good time chatting with you both. Thanks for doing this podcast, bringing the community together. It's very, very nice. Wonderful. Well, thanks again for coming on. Uh, make sure you guys buy Mia's book, Knockout, if you don't want to get knocked out by the Muay Thai guys. And uh, yeah, follow on Instagram and everything as well. So uh, thanks again, Mia, and we'll see you all later.